sleep on the Rod Peterson Show. I am tired of hearing about the Golden Knights cheating with the salary cap. I am tired of it, and I don't have a dog in the hunt. How do you feel about it, man? It's like, I want, get over it. I love it. It's within the rules. <laughs> what? So, and I, I think, the, you know, sometimes... A form of flattery is jealousy, and that's what other fans are. It's not, you know what? If it happens to your team, if you're a fan of a team, and I'll be honest, I've never been a fan. For whatever reason, I played the sport. I'm ultra competitive playing. Now I just love the sport, the team. Um, obviously, working for the Golden Knights, I want to see them successful. But that said, if I'm a fan of any team, I want them to utilize every option possible to put the most competitive team on the ice and give them the best chance of winning each and every year. Kelly McCrimmon and George McPhee have done that year after year. Anybody could have went and got, tried to get Alex Petrangelo, Jack Eichel, Mark Stone. These are all trades I mean. Tomas Hurdle, who knew he was available? That's to the brilliance of the Golden Knights. And I'll tell you, one guy who did, did not want to be hurt is Mark Stone. Uh, knowing him, competitive, he wants to be out there each and every night. And if he was, there would be no Tomas Hurdle, but he got injured. Um, yes, it's happened two years in a row. The back injury he tried to fight through. He could have missed a lot more time, got the surgery. This time was just a freak incident. Him and Trenton colliding just in the neutral zone. And, and this is, you know, you have no timeline on something like this. He's out for a long time. Well, you got the cap space, so you've got management, and then you've got an owner that backs it that's willing to spend it. I think it's terrific. I really do. If you're a fan of a team, and this is what you're going to get from your ownership, from your management, and it's all within the rules. There is, I'm not even going to use the other word because it's not happening. This is within the rules. This is a competitive group that makes their team better. And if you don't like it, it's too bad. You, you know, that's, and they're not the only team that uses LTIR. A lot of teams use it. And uh, it's just for them, they've been able to use it to the max. And they've pulled off some amazing trades. They've given up a lot. Uh, you have to pay for them. But it has made them competitive every year. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. One night in Edmonton, we were out on the town, and there was a guy by the name of Bane Nori. How about that? Bane says, I did I ever tell you guys about the night I was out with the uh, Rolling Stones? And I'm like, come on! What was Mick Jagger like? And he's like, well, no, no, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards weren't there. It was the rest of the band. And I hit the floor. You weren't with the Rolling Stones then, Bane. Keith Richards and Mick Jagger are the Rolling Stones. <laughs> exactly. Like This is the Rod Peterson Show. It sure the heck is. Hi, everybody. Welcome on up inside your favorite daytime sports talk show. It's episode number 1205, if you can believe it, the RP show. Coming at you live on Game Plus TV, Key Radio in Atlanta, Apple Podcast, Spotify, and YouTube Live. Um, we got a very special, very special show. We're going to run like five, six guests through the show today. I'm obviously in the South Florida studio, presented by Progressive Insurance. Moose is in Mooseman, Saskatchewan. And Darren, before we jump into the Quick Six Show topics, can you tell the viewers what you're doing? Yesterday you're in Toronto, today you're in the home of Dave Tippett. Explain. I know, I know, it's pretty awesome. But you know what, just look over my shoulder and that's all you need to know. The Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship is going on here in Mooseman. It's been going on throughout the week. They are down, I'm just looking at the ice, it's right in my view view line, which is awesome. Three of the four games are done for the morning, so there's going to be a little break. Everybody's going to be around in the uh, lounge, which is just over my shoulder. Real convenient setup, especially for me being here. And uh, it's a lot of fun, man. It's going to be a, a great day and a great night. I am envious, but way to go, Moose. And thank you to uh, the town of Mooseman. And again, the 62nd Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship. It's a thing. And uh, we'll having, be having some guests from there today, along with two members of the Canadian Football League Combine, which is going on in Winnipeg beginning today. As you, as you. A lot of people will know that name from the univer formerly University of South Florida and the Clemson Tigers. He's from Brooks, Alberta. He's participating in the CFL Combine and Jackson Sombach of the Regina Rams. So we are live from the CFL Combine. They'll be with us later. Can you hit the quick six show horn, please? Director Jordan. And
and uh, Dean Ducky Millard's going to be with us from Edmonton, too. We got so much to get to, so we're going to start with the big story. And if you've noticed, there's a huge East Central Sask West Man flavor to the show today. <laughs> For obvious reasons CFL Combines in Winnipeg, Mooses and Mooseman, and the Winnipeg Jets. Won last night in New York in the game of the night. Mark Scheifele scored thrice. Connor Hellebuck made 38 saves. And Winnipeg beat the New York Rangers 4-2. I watched it. I was thoroughly entertained. Kyle Connor also scored for the Jets, who have won three straight and four of their last five. I want to point something out, Darren. I'm a Jets backer, and I think you are too. And I'm going to do Winnipeg a huge favor here and not pick them to go to the Stanley Cup final. Uh, like, at least not today. I haven't really made my Stanley Cup final predictions, but I don't want to jinx them. But I'll back them. And I think they're good enough to be there. And they showed it last night. Uh, are you hearing any talk of the Jets? You've been in Moosem in there for a few hours. I think the Jets <laughs> are their team. It has to be their team. You know what? I thought about that. Maybe I should have flown into Winnipeg and driven a Mooseman as opposed to <laughs> flying into Regina. It's probably... Well, not quite as close, but uh, no, definitely you lean this way and you start to just feel it in the air, whether people are talking about it or not. And the Jets, man, yeah, I know it's up and down and some, team, you know, some fans aren't liking the way they're playing or the way they're losing or the way they're winning some games, but you got a good team and you proved it again last night. Yeah, it's just, huh. it's just dumb. I'm not listening to the naysayers. They got a really good hockey team and a really great coaching staff, the best goaltender in the West. So I'll say it again. I'm a Jets backer, but I won't jinx them by picking them to go to the Stanley Cup final nor win it. Now, there were some other games. Owen Tippett scored 19 seconds into the game and added an assist, and Morgan Frost had a goal and a helper as the Philadelphia Flyers beat the Toronto Maple Leafs 4-3. Up in Edmonton, Connor McDavid scored and set up Leon Dreisaitl's game-winning power play goal 3-18 into overtime as the Oilers beat Montreal 3-2. I'm not sure if you classify this as an upset or not, but Braden Point scored two third-period goals. Nikita Kucherov had a four-point night, and Tampa Bay beat Vegas 5-3 in the Fortress. And I'll wind this up in Vancouver, where Elias Pettersson had two goals and a helper as Vancouver moved atop the Western Conference standings with a 3-2 win over the Buffalo Sabres. Now, I'll say this. In our breakaway picks that we do every day, I correctly picked 10 of 13 winners in the NHL yeah. last night. Darren picked nine. And I'd have to go back and look what the dissenting one was. I think you picked Columbus and I picked Detroit. Whatever it was, we were very close. I picked, I'm sitting here going, I might be one of those sports picking better guys. I don't know. It's kind of fun, but I would only stick to hockey. Uh, you're way, way, way better at football. And of course, you can bet on tiddlywinks and March Madness and all the rest. But uh, I'm going to move on. We'll come back to this later. But that's the big story. Last night's NHL leftovers and the fact that I'm a Winnipeg backer. I want to spend more time on this. Chris Simon, once one of hockey's most feared enforcers, has died at the age of 52. The NHL Players Association confirmed the news via Chris Simon's family that he died Monday night. The cause of death wasn't provided, but his family released a statement today saying they believe it's CTE. The six foot three, 232 pound product of Wawa, Ontario compiled 1,824 PIMS in the NHL with Quebec, Colorado, Washington, Chicago, New York Rangers, Calgary, New York Islanders, and Minnesota Wild. I never met him. I obviously respect him for the role that he performed in the National Hockey League. The fact that he even got there at all is to be respected by anybody that plays in the league, but especially being a fighter. And I've seen a lot of my good friends just pouring their hearts out on social media. They clearly love the guy, Chris Simon. And I will say this, it's, uh, I, I was in a bit of a Twitter discussion today with a guy, I'm not going to name him, but I, I, this is the one thing I'm very passionate about. He went off about fighting in hockey and way to go fighting in hockey and way to go and now it's CTE. And I said, well, wait, so you're okay because you're a big NFL fan, I know that. And CFL fans, so you're okay if a football player suffers from CTE, but not a hockey player? And then the conversation spiraled down from there. But it's the same disease, and it, we all know where it comes from. And I will say this also. In the story that I read this morning, the family doesn't know that he has CTE. It says right in there, they think he has CTE because he displayed all the signs. You can't diagnose CTE while you're living. You need to diagnose the brain post-mortem. So... 
be, obviously I get passionate about that, but that's why people tune in here. It's the Rod Peterson Show. So before you go any further with your thoughts, the poll question is this. For Key Yorkton Kia today, and Darren's very close to Yorkton geographically today, uh, at Key Yorkton Kia, unleash the future, the Kia EV6 GT at Key Yorkton Kia, where performance and innovation go hand in hand. Go to keyyorktonkia.com or call 306-783-2772 for more information. The 23 Kia EV6 GT, movement that inspires. Should fighting be banned in hockey? I think I just spent the last four minutes telling you why I say no, it should not be banned from hockey. And I'll just simply put that in your lap, Moose, yes or no? And uh, the reason for why you're voting either way. It's such a tough question, you know, when you talk about fighting in hockey, because the world is evolving on a daily basis, right? And I'm here in Mooseman, small town Saskatchewan, where I grew up, right? I mean, most small towns like this, especially across the prairies in Canada, you can't float the idea of banning fighting in hockey. These are old school, salt of the earth people that, you know, grew up here, and that's part of the history of the game. Do I want to see it gone? Um, no, I, I, I really don't. I'm going to vote no. That's what I've decided. In this moment, I've talked myself into voting no. But I see why people would vote yes, because there are senseless fights throughout the years. And I grew up in an era of senseless fighting, where enforcers sat at the face up and said, are we going to fight? And they fought. And there was nothing that happened in the game that led to it. There was nothing that happened in the media that led to it. They just decided they were going to try and set a some sort of made up tone, but I like it when it happens in the heat of the moment. It is unfortunate, you know, when, when players suffer from CT. So I will say no right now. Joe Lazito is watching in New York and he says, rest in peace, Chris Simon. Patrolman Pete says, CTE will be the undoing of pro football. I love the game, but I don't want my son to play it. All of this is voluntary. I, it, as long and what I think that there's millions and billions on the line financially, people are going to be playing contact football. If you don't want to play contact football or contact hockey, don't. Go play floor hockey. Go play intramurals, as they say. Um, it's a topic that we can spend a lot of time on, and we will spend some time here. The gentleman that I was having a discussion on Twitter about this with today brought up MMA and boxing, and he goes... Fighting isn't part of the game. Carlos in Indianapolis said a similar thing. I won't, one of our viewers, I don't have time to uh, quote what he said, but with, with, with regards to fighting not being part of the game, who says it's not part of the game? Would you say, Darren, that tripping and high sticking and shooting the puck out of play are part of the game? Would you say they are or they aren't? Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, they're all penalized. So is fighting. <laughs> It is part of the game, and it's been part of the game for 100-plus years. So who's anybody to say that it isn't part of the game? The game of hockey that we love. So, I don't know. I guess uh, I, I would go so far as to call them a Karen. I mean, people that have never been in fights in their life have very strong opinions about fighting. That's fine. And again, I could go on and on and on, and I feel like I am, both with regards to the role of the fighter. I've had a lot of discussions with guys like Stu Grimson and Tiger Williams, although Tiger will tell you he was an all-star and could score. So, but the guys that are there to fight, would Matt Rempe of the Rangers have an NHL job if it wasn't for fighting? Hard to say. That's really all he's done since he came into the NHL, right? But I, I equate it to this. When yeah. I say the Canadian Football League should just say, scrap it and become NFL Canada. And the NFL can draft their players and send them to Canada to develop. And I have the football guys go, no, 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 Rod, you can't do that because there's the tweener, the linebacker, D lineman, DN, that's kind of too big to be a linebacker, but too small to be a D lineman in the States. He fits in perfect in the CFL. Yeah. Okay, okay, whatever then. But, then the, but, but fighters are gone. Things evolve. Things change. You know what I'm saying? So I guess I fight the elimination of the fighter role. They're fighting the elimination of the tweener in pro football. So, Patrolman Pete says, times change, Roddy. Hey, trust me, I get it. But I will say this, as the NHL GMs meet here in Florida somewhere, I haven't run into them. 
They're not voting on ending hockey, uh, fighting in hockey. So clearly they agree with me. Because if they actually thought it needed to go, it would be gone. Any other thoughts before I move on? No, it's just something that as, as we get new information, we have to be okay changing our opinion. And, you know, how we feel about fighting in hockey today might not be the same that we feel about it in 10 years from now. But today, you know, it still has a place. Not the same place that it had in the game 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. But it still has a place in the game. Trust me, I know that times change. Again, Stu Grimson wouldn't play in the NHL today or any one of these goons. Um, yeah. So I, times have changed, and they've been ushered out of the game. Joe Lazito in New York Red City says more concussions occur after a hard hit than a fight. Will the anti-fight crowd want hitting band next? Yes, Joe, probably, and you know that. To baseball, Colton Kowser and Tyler Nevin both homered in the, hang on, seventh inning to kickstart the late uh, Baltimore run as the Orioles earned a 13-8 win over the Toronto Blue Jays. Tuesday in spring training, George Springer with a two-run single in the third and Dalton Varsho with a two-run homer in the fifth paced Toronto's offense. Jays take on the Braves today in Northport, Florida. By the way, that photo that was sent to me by my buddy Brent that was in the Jays souvenir store, it was Kevin Barker, not George Springer. But when you think about it, they do kind of look a lot alike. I had to go back and look at the photo. I'm like, no, no, this is definitely Kevin Barker, not George Springer. I felt bad if I gave him a bum steer. Point four, they're the glamour events of any football combine, but neither the bench press nor the 40-yard dash are major points of emphasis on Chris Jones' evaluation of a pro prospect. The Edmonton Elks GM and coach feels the vertical and broad jumps provide more telling measurables. Chris Jones and other CFL officials will get to evaluate 84 national and global prospects at the CFL's National Combine this week in Winnipeg. They'll be on the field tomorrow. We've got prospects as you as you. And trust me, he's got a hell of a story he'll tell us later on. And Jackson Sombach coming on today from Winnipeg. We got a couple of minutes here, Darren. And this is a real yin-yang, apples and orange, night and day type thing. It's really important to the players. And it's not that important to me. But I understand why it is important. And that's why we're going to give it coverage. Fair? How, where are you on pro football combines? Yeah, I think they're important, especially, you know what, I think they're really important at this level um, in the Canadian Football League because, you know, coaches feel that they can teach you the game, but they can't teach you work ethic. You know, that's hard to teach somebody. You, you have to, you know, develop that on your own. You have to understand what's required, and you get that out of the combine. You understand who's putting in the work, who's ready to be a pro, who the athletes are. You know, and if you can, you know, coaches will tell you, I don't care if they're American, if they're Canadian, if they're Mexican or Japanese athletes. If you give me a great athlete, I can have success with them on the field. So we're going to see some really great athletic performances. We're going to see who the athletes are and see if some uh, players jump up out of nowhere and climb the, uh, the draft ladder. I can't wait to interview as you, as you. And I'll tell you why later on when he joins us. He's got a hell of a story. And Jackson Sombach, I've known him since he was in his mummy's tummy. So I'm looking forward yeah. to that <laughs> as well. Um, yeah, there's a lot of very interesting things that we're covering today. We're going to be going right back to the Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship in Mooseman when we return here on Game Plus Television, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. 
And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be a hero by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. EDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. Hey, everybody. Yes, that is a fact. And I tell you what, I am happy, happy, happy because everything's going according to plan. We're going to get our guests all in. We're covering all the topics I want. And I'd be even happier if you did me a favor and just rewarded your love of movies to yourself by signing up for Landmark Extras for free today at our official partner, movie partner, Landmark Cinemas. Get more of what you love, like free movies, concession items, invitations to exclusive screenings, special events, and more. Go to LandmarkCinemas.com today, and again, sign up for free. Nothing's free anymore, but that is. And from our viewers, uh, Reg in Winnipeg says, can we ban the Arizona Coyotes hockey team? There's news on the Coyotes coming out of the NHL GM meetings that I will get to a little later on. Uh, from Key Radio in Atlanta, where we're airing right now on 99.1 FM, Ryan or Radio says, Go Braves! Oh! Dave, number one in Winnipeg, says, Good morning from Winnipeg, gang. How about that game of the night last night? Jets and Rangers, loved it. Robert in Vegas says, Lightning looked good in their win last night over the Golden Knights. And from Dale in Winnipeg, he says, Good morning, Rod. Something coming out of Winnipeg. Rick Bonus to be out indefinitely, taking leave from the team. Keep up the great work. We'll address all those things, but first, we're going back out to Musiman. And the 62nd Canadian National Firefighters Curling Championship, Dale Nixon, I believe, is on the other end. There he is. There's Dale from Musiman, the curling club. Dale, welcome to the RP show, man. How's your day going out there so far on day, what probably seems like 79 of this championship? Yeah, going good here, Rod. Uh... Yeah, it's a long haul, and uh, but it, it's been fun. Well, I appreciate I you here in the background. On. I appreciate there's, there's, 
Yeah, I can hear it. I can hear it. I'm just going to ask you a question, and you run with it. Dale, I knew this thing was big. I didn't know how big. Can you explain to our viewers what all goes into the Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship? Well, it's a it's a massive event. Uh, uh, it takes it takes a long time to plan. We actually uh, bid to host this back in 2018. The pandemic uh, the pandemic uh, delayed it for a few years. We were supposed to host in 2021, so we we did get some extra time to plan. Uh, but yeah, we bring we've got 11 teams here from all across Canada, right from the territories, right to the east coast, uh, and and yeah, they're uh, everybody's having fun, and uh, there's entertainment every night. Uh, the curling is fantastic. The people are fantastic. And uh, yeah, we're just happy to have everybody here. Am I correct in saying you've curled in this not once, but multiple times? What's your connection to this championship, Dale? Uh, my connection started, uh, I started curling at the provincial level uh, back in, in the early 2000s. Uh, so I've, I'm 24 years or 23 years at that, uh, curling in that. Uh, never been lucky enough to uh, to win the, at the provincials to curl in this, but uh, I was the director for seven years for, for Saskatchewan, so I've been to seven nationals as a director. Uh, so I got to learn the atmosphere, meet the people, uh, and then uh, when I decided to step down as director, I got thinking, well, I knew we were hosting in 2021, so I thought it would it'd be a really, really cool thing to bring it to Mooseman. So here it is. Well, what a town, and I know Mike Schwain's involvement in it as well, uh, just putting that town on the map sports-wise. But I have one more question for you, because I saw the schedule for this thing. Every night there's entertainment. You mentioned that earlier. The teams are responsible for putting it on themselves. What's an example of the entertainment on a nightly basis from the curling teams? Well... Um, the, uh, and not, not only the entertainment, but the meals, like the teams bring, there's five nights where the teams bring the meals, they supply the food. We supply the, uh, the chef to cook the food and, uh, and then they serve everybody at, at the, uh, at the entertainment or at the hospitality room. And, uh, uh, the entertainment was skits. Uh, they each put a skit on, uh, you know, and, and it is, it's something to see. It's, it's funny. Uh, it keeps everybody entertained. Uh, we had a band in here one night. We had a band last night again. Um, yeah, it's there. There's always something going on. We have uh, Mike's running an auction tonight uh, with with uh, Darren and uh, and and a local auctioneer. So yeah, it's there's always something. Tomorrow night we're heading down to a little town called Maryfield for uh, for steaks and, and down there too. So there's always something. The home of Doug Sauter and Brock Lesnar. Dale, thanks for having us okay. out. Uh, enjoy it, man, and uh, we'll chat with you soon. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Rod. Thanks for having me. D Dale Nixon's with the organized committee of the 62nd Canadian Firefighter Curling Championship. Unbelievable. Okay, uh, we got a big we got a big Winnipeg contingent of viewers today, and I knew that we would. What did I say? There's a big East Central Sask Westman flavor to today's show, and here's why. If you're just tuning in. Um, obviously, the Jets winning last night 4-2 at the Rangers in a potential Stanley Cup final. And I've been enjoying... There's the one thing. I don't do it as much as I used to, but I still do it, and that is go back and forth with the fans on social media. There's a viewer today. Uh, I don't know if he's watching now, but Mike Adamia said, we want Florida as a Jets fan. He wants a Jets-Florida Stanley Cup final. And I'm like, whoa, buddy. Be careful what you wish for, because the Leafs said that last year. And what was it, Clark? A five-game series? Five and out. Be careful what you wish for, man. Uh... <laughs> Clark, Clark blocked it. Your mind, your mind does have the ability to block unpleasant experiences. That's a fact. Uh, okay, so I'm, listen, I'll just finish my topics. We, are we moving the moose back in? What exactly are we doing? Okay, well, hang on. Can you please send to me uh, the information on that? Because I only got one name. So we got a minute. Yeah, that would be great. We got a minute or two before we do that. Actually, quite a few minutes. 
point five of the quick six is the Toronto Raptors are on a seven game losing skid going into tonight's game against the Sacramento Kings. Raptors guard Emmanuel quickly has been ruled out of the game for personal reasons. Toronto is already missing injured starter Scotty Burns and Jakob Pertle along with RJ Barrett. Can we just end the season already for the Toronto Raptors? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Here's point six. I have this split between a couple of things. And one is March Madness. Trust me, we aren't going to be the March Madness show. I'm sticking my toe in the water, but I'm not diving in. I'll fin fill up my bracket, but we're not going to sit here and be like everybody else and pretend we actually follow it all year. However, this was sent to me today by Carlos in Indianapolis, and it was uh, Joe Biden has made his picks for both the men's and women's sides of the NCAA National Basketball Championships. Here's the quote from President Biden. I'm picking South Carolina women's basketball to win it all. And in the men's bracket, the Huskies to go back to back. That's Connecticut. And this is one, another one of the 87 reasons why I don't want to have anything to do with politics. Because you can predictably pe see people responding. Shouldn't you be running the country instead of making basketball picks? Blah, blah, blah. So Joe Biden makes his picks for March Madness today. Uh, do we have you have you been forwarded the information? No, not yet. Well, we've got Dean Millard coming up, and as we said, we're going to be going live to the CFL Combine. I will tell you that is an hour two. As you as you will be with us. He started his college football. He's from Brooks, Alberta. He started his college career at Clemson. Then he went to the University of South Florida. And then he was at the Garden City Junior College last year. He's a load, and he's in the combine. He's going to be with us next hour. And Jackson Sombach, U of R Rams DB. But we're, who do we have in Musiman now? I didn't get a name other than Dale Nixon, who we just had. Are we going out there, or what are we doing? This could be, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Who, who have I got? Who is this? Hey, Rod. Who am I chatting with? Winston Bryan, Charlottetown. Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Hey, Winston, welcome uh, to the RP show. Welcome to Mooseman. Thanks for and having us. And listen, let's. Hey, hey, well, I can hear that maritime accent. All right, man, tell me about the Canadian Firemen's, Cur uh, Firefighters Curling Championship and your perspective on it. And you're obviously a competitor. How's it been? Well, I'm a life member of the association and I'm, a acting, I'm the acting director for Prince Edward Island. Um, it, this is one of the best organizations. Uh, it's a very, very strong organization in the fire services here in Canada. Um, it's basically one of the only that we can gather from every province and gather in one regional area and uh, have, a, have a Canadian championship. Uh, this championship was ranked next to the Briar years ago, um, and we still are. Um, the provincial champs come in. They're the winners. Each provincial champ, uh, everyone's a winner, and they come here and they compete for this grand prize right behind me here, the old hydrant. And uh, it's just a, a fabulous, fabulous organization to belong to. Uh, we do, we uh, Winston, we're involved I, with charities. Uh, continue, C continue, go, yep, keep we're going. Rob, Rob, the charities we support across our regions and uh, Muscular Dystrophy of Canada is our main, main uh, charity that we donate thousands and thousands of dollars every year too. So it's a, it's a winner, winner for firefighters and it's a winner for charity. Well, if you are a life member, like you say, you would know everything there is to know about the Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship. This is the 62nd year. As a Canadian sports guy my whole life, I've heard of it. I'd never seen it. How did it get to be so big? Because there's a lot of bond spills. You and I both know that. But not many this big. As you just said, the only one bigger is the Briar. How did it get to be so big? Well, like I said, it all started back in the, in the early 60s. When, uh, when, uh, when our founding president, Aubrey Neff, uh, started off with a goal, he wanted to go right across Canada and get this, get, get this association built. He succeeded. I'll just give you a little story, Rod. We just, in our own association, um, we had a guys that attended the Legion in Ottawa back in 1962. They met Aubrey there. They got in the conversation. We joined the association in 1965, and we've been here ever since. So that's how the association grew, with strong curlers, Strong competition and great, great fellowship. Well, I can see that. And Musaman is just a progressive town. There are very few like it. 
Um, so I'm happy that they brought us oh. out in this championship. And Winston, thank you for being a great speaker and a great guy. And anything else you'd like to say before I let you go? Rod, just a Mooseman. Um, what a great host out here. A small, a small community. I had the privilege of hosting it back in Prince Edward Island last year. Again, we used a small, uh, a small uh, community. Um, we hosted it in Charlottetown. Our ice surface was in Montague. Um, small communities really make this, uh, make this association grow. The fellowship, the friendly people here, unbelievable. Class, class, class act. Absolutely, man. And uh, you fit right in. I love that town. Winston, thanks for coming on and have fun the rest of the week. Thanks, Rod. Thank you. Have a good day. You bet. 62nd Canadian Firefighters Curling Championships are on in Moosom and Sask. Glad you asked. Before we pause and bring in Dean Millard, sports update on this Wednesday. Like, literally, everything is happening. Bob Cole. Shohei Otani's RBI single capped a four-run eighth-inning rally in his Dodgers debut, and Los Angeles beat the San Diego Padres 5-2 in Major League Baseball season opener in Seoul, Korea this morning. Otani went two for five in his first game since signing that record $700 million contract with the Dodgers. Meanwhile, Canada's Rachel Holman defeated Japan's Miyu Ueno 7-2 this morning to remain unbeaten at the World Women's Curling Championship in Nova Scotia. Rachel and her team of Tracy Fleury, Emma Miskew, and Sarah Wilk scored three in the eighth end en route to their seventh straight round-robin victory. They've won 23 in a row. Sports updates for Common Crown Brewing Company, turning your everyday common beer into a unique and exceptional experience. Visit commoncrown.ca. And also, Landmark Cinemas coming to theaters this Friday night. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. In the latest Ghostbusters, the Spengler family returns to where it all started, the iconic New York City firehouse, to team up with the original Ghostbusters who developed a top-secret research lab to take busting ghosts to the next level. Starring Paul Rudd, Annie Potts, Dan Aykroyd, and more, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in Landmark Cinemas this Friday night. We're going up to Edmonton next. We'll be right back on the Game Plus Television Network, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new halo mounting system. If it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Foreigner, live in Moose Jaw. Foreigner is back. The Farewell Canada Tour. You're as cold as ice. May 13th, the Moose Jaw Event Center. Foreigner, with special guest, Head Pins. Tickets on sale now at sasktix.ca and the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. We're all capable of doing more. 
more speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. At the Key Auto Group pre-owned division, we're bringing back that new car feeling. No matter what, it's new to you and priced just right. No hidden fees, prices you can trust, an upfront buying experience. And it's all at keyautogroup.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now, back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back, everybody. It's going fast today. Hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. It's hour one, and as you know, when we talk hockey, it's brought to you by Common Crown Brewing Company in Calgary, turning your everyday common beer into unique and exceptional experience. Visit commoncrown.ca. And for that, we're going up to Edmonton now. Dean Millard joining us from Four Vengeance Media. His name, uh, well, he's no stranger to anybody. Brandon Product, longtime hockey broadcaster up in Edmonton. Can we start with the oil, Dino? Uh, it was a 3-2 sure. overtime win over Montreal last night, and that was, that was not a shock. Maybe if it was a surprise, it was that it went to overtime at all. Your thoughts on the latest Oilers win? Yeah, th this is a team that um, I, I think every game they go into now, even against Colorado the other night, uh, you should be expecting a win and, and two points. The fact that they go to overtime, yeah, maybe it's uh, not expected, but not the worst thing. You give away the bonus point to an Eastern Conference team and playing tighter overtime games now is, I, I wouldn't mind it if, uh, you know, half my games almost went into it. You you need to start getting into that. We're seeing that at the junior hockey level right now. We just came off our youth uh, provincials or our championships. We're seeing that as the last two, three weeks of the season, the hockey needs to get better. And what has the, the problem been with the Oilers is that they're a great regular season team, but they can't get it done in the playoffs. So having tougher games in the regular season, uh, sign me up if I'm the Oilers for as many as I can get heading down the stretch to get into that mode of, of having to play really, really tough hockey and having to win differently than 7-5. Now, it's interesting you say that, and Carius was on with us last week, our old friend, and he brought up the playoff disappointments. You'd like to think, Dean, that teams learn year after year after year. This is largely the same group that lost to Vegas last year. Same, there's no Jack Campbell, but Stuart Skinner's the guy. The forward group's all the same. You had Ekholm last year. Like, maybe they learned a thing or two last year. Maybe this year will be different. I guess, what choice do you have, right? <laughs> Exactly. You have to learn. Uh, great quote from a, a coach I dealt with this year, Ryan Carlson out of Kootenai. He said, a loss is only a loss if you don't learn something from it. So the Oilers should have had a lot of learning experience. And, and I mean, this is cliche, Rod, but we see this in a lot of things. You don't see it as much in junior because there's not as much time as guys age out. But in the pros, you see it in a lot of different sports. How many times does a team have, you know, devastating defeats or at least one before they get to it all with with the same group. So the Oilers have had a lot of those experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, I think probably enough for their liking and their fans liking. And they're like, okay, we, we're done with the learning. Let's take the test. We, you know, it's like your driver's test. It's like, hey, how many times can I go driving with my dad before I can actually take the test? And it's kind of like the Oilers have to be, it's, it's put up or shut up. I said at the start of the year, Stanley Cup or bust, or at least Stanley Cup finals or bust and they went through that swoon when everybody was panicking and they came out of it and it's still the same goal the roller coaster ride still has the same goal at the end no matter how many loop-de-loops you do during the season oh man dino you brought so many things up in my mind number one it took me three cracks to get my driver's license but i finally did so there's that 
Um, two, I guess the orders, somebody brought up that they have not, they are the hottest team since the coaching change, which I think was November 12th. Can you think back to where were you, what you were thinking at the time? Did you think a, co a change needed to be made? I mean, clearly it did. It's just so weird to me that Jay Woodcroft leaves as the winningest all-time winning percentage in NHL, in Oilers history. It's unbelievable. It's a what have you done for me lately? Ask Lindy Ruff. He had the best season in Devils history last year, and he's watching Travis Green right now. And it's the same thing. I did not think the Oilers needed to make a coaching change. I thought the fault was on the players again. But the cliche is you can't fire the players. You fire the coach. They did. They needed to change. The team had clearly not stop listening to to Jay Woodcroft for whatever reason he was only it's the same thing with you know Stuart Skinner was up for the rookie of the year and people wanted to punt him uh, because th they struggled a little bit and I mean obviously there needed to be a change H hindsight is is 2020 for that reason but at the time I was disappointed that the players were getting left off you know off the hook again for this reason so Sometimes uh, what you feel, and, and maybe even Ken, Hol Ken Holland felt the same way, but he still had to make a move or else he was going to be the one that was getting fired. You had to do something to turn that season around. And what other options did you have? Making a trade, to me, is a panic move because you could be giving away somebody who is underperforming. So a coaching change was really the only thing, the only option they had. Well, it's... Dude, I don't know how you survive and continue to survive so long in the Edmonton media market with those Oiter fans. And for, they're not any different than any other rabid fans. But it's like Ken Holland signing Evander Kane. I thought it was a bad idea. Worked out pretty good. Demoted Jack Campbell. That's no small thing. Firing Jay Woodcroft. That couldn't have been easy either. It, everyone was the right move. And it's interesting, by the I way, know. I looked at Ken Holland yeah, here the other night. He was in the press box, Doug Armstrong, a bunch of GMs were here. I'm like, what are these guys all doing here? And now I see that the GM meetings are going on. But for another year, it's the Kings and Orders, it looks like, in round one. For the longest time, it's been lined up that way. Uh, looks like it will be. They've, the Kings have been nothing more than a speed bump, really, every year for the Orders. Do you expect this year to be the same or no? Yeah, I, I think so. Listen, I, I I honestly think that the way this Edmonton Oilers team has has been built, and you know, say what you want about Connor Brown and and the one goal this year, and you know, I'll, I I couldn't believe it. I don't know how a guy who scored twenty could go that long, but he missed a lot of time. He's going to be he he will play a somewhat valuable role in, in the postseason. I mean. This is a, a move I think the Oilers are built to to win that series in five, maybe. Um, I, you know, I'm, I know the Kings made a change and everything, but I, I'm like you. I think the Oilers are not looking past the Kings, but they are built for bigger and, and better things. I mean, it's amazing. We might have an all-Canadian conference final. Apologies to the Colorado Avalanche and the Dallas Stars, who I think are ridiculously good, the Colorado especially, but there are three Canadian teams and we could honestly see a Canadian Conference final. I would love it. I'd love to see an Edmonton Jets. I mean, 1990 is calling. Jets fans would like some revenge. And by the way, I talked to Craig McTavish a while ago about that year. He said they, the Jets were a better team, but the Oilers, they had it up here because of Mark Messier and company. They had the belief, and they got into other teams' heads. And I wonder if a McDavid dry settle, even though they don't have that playoff experience, gets in other teams' heads uh, when it comes into the playoffs. Or the fact that the Oilers have had no success, the other teams said, these guys are easy. I think it's going to be a different story this year for the Edmonton Oilers, the way they've been built. As they say, 90% of the game is half mental. You know that, Dean. <laughs> okay, before yes. we let you go, producer Clark, get it ready. Uh, Dean Millard is with Ford Vengeance Media. You've got a video here. Uh, Clark, roll it whenever you uh, are able to. And there you go. Dino, what, 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 what are we looking at? Well, we had our JPHL championships over the weekend, four divisions at our brand new Silent Ice uh, Center Arena. And like IKS, you know, we're just trying to produce amazing memories for kids and, and adults and, and youth sports and different things. We think we're doing an excellent job. We had 13 multi-camera shoot replays and interview desk. And, you know, Rod, when we were growing up playing sports, we never had anything like this. The the youth and, and the, the parents and everybody, the memories that, that we're able to make for them, 
them are, are so special. So I just wanted to congratulate our entire crew and the JPHL for a, a job well done that we did. And uh, like I said, like IKS, For Vengeance Media is just trying to make memories for a lot of people. And the memories I have look like they were shot from a canoe uh, when I was playing hockey. They certainly weren't 13 multi-camera angles and, and all this stuff. So we're doing our best to put a stamp on uh, youth sports because we think youth sports deserve to be covered. And the other thing, Rod, is... The first two stations that I started out at are now closed. CKX and Brandon, RDTV and Red Deer. The next two stations I worked at, Global Regina and Global Edmonton, don't have sports departments. Production companies like ours and IKS are the places that young students will need to go to now if they want to do sports. So just a, a changing landscape of uh, sports media, that's for sure. Hey, you guys are doing a great job. And I, we had this chat the last time you were on. I remember the first time yeah. I saw myself on video as a hockey player. I was 16, I think. VHS, of course. And it was like, oh, 16. Oh, my God. All right, Dean. Keep it up, brother. Appreciate you. Let's do it again soon. Thanks, Roddy. Anytime. Dean Millard from 4 Vengeance Media. We'll be right back with viewer takeover. We'll put it all together. We still got another hour coming up as well where we will go live to the CFL Combine here on Game Plus TV, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Live. Bridget Laquette. I'm a First Nation Olympic silver medalist and I'm proud to represent Indigenous hockey players across Canada. Each year hundreds of Canadians need a stem cell transplant from an unrelated donor to save their life. Anyone can have a hard time finding a stem cell match but for Indigenous peoples it can be even more difficult because just over 1% of prospective donors on Canada's stem cell registry are of Indigenous backgrounds. Be a hero. Join me in Hockey Gives Blood in helping to make a life-saving difference to those in need. Register today at blood.ca slash be a hero. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. Hee hee! Text capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. 
Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rod. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Viewer takeover time of hour one. And as I said, we're getting through it all. This has been one of the wildest shows that we've had in terms of directing traffic out of the 1,205 we've done. Great work, IKS crew, Clark and Jordan, of course, and Darren out there and Mooseman. we got some more guests coming up next hour off the top. And then Moose and I will do our NHL picks tonight. We'll talk CFL Combine, NFL, whatever you'd like. And we'll be going live to the CFL Combine next hour. I got, a, I got some thoughts I'd like to get to, too. Um, uh, several. Wayne has written in from Victoria, B.C. He says, hey, Rod, on the Sober Carpenter text line, because I've been watching the Scotties, Briar, and now the Women's World Curling Championship. I haven't watched curling in a couple of years, but I'm blown away by how great the curling is. Good stuff. What else are you going to watch? Jen from the Four Seasons writes in and says, uh, she's the Big Waters fan, and she says, Jay Woodcroft seemed to be getting a little goofy, in my opinion. Defense needs to lighten up as well. Here's the thing where I look at Dean Millard. He hosted Oilers pre- and post-game shows for a long time on what's now TSN 1260, which is now dead. But anyways, had nothing to do with Dean. But it's like these fans, I tell you what, they flipping wear you out, man. They wear you out. And even us, like I had an opinion as I've said it before, I grew up an Oilers fan. There's still some blue and orange in the DNA there somewhere. And I thought all those moves were bad. Bringing in Evander Kane, cutting Jack Campbell, firing Jay Woodcroft, and they all turned out to be right. Even Ken Holland, I don't know how he keeps his cool. I've seen some news conferences where he has snap. And it's just uh, social media. Well, even before social media, it's not new, okay? Because there was call-in shows that people actually called into, right? It doesn't happen as much as it used to. But it's been around forever, giving the fans a voice. But eventually, it does just wear you right out. Uh, thank you, Ryan, in New York for saying the nice words. He writes, he says, I love these curlers that are on today's RP show. These are great interviews. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, Jen goes on to say, the oil need to be better. I hate overtime. Just win games outright, please. Here's the thing. It's not enough to win anymore. You got to win fancy. Doesn't matter that you gave up a point to Montreal. It's not even going to make the playoffs, nor is it even in your conference. No, you got to end it in regulation or I'm not happy. See how that would drive people nuts? Jordan S. writes in and says, rest in peace, Chris Simon. We did address that earlier, and that's the poll question today. Should fighting in hockey be banned? 82% of you saying, no, it should not. I'll say this about the beautiful next chapter in my life. I mean, we can continue to do the RP show forever and do these live events, and it'll be me in these places instead of Darren, or we'll rotate it, but that's why he's where he is doing these things, and I love that he is. Here, we're going to continue doing the Panthers and Lightning show, and I'm not letting these fans wear me out. I'm not letting me. They're trying. They are trying. And I'm going back and forth with them, answering their questions as much as I do or want to. But then I shut my phone off. They're like, do you think the Panthers are losing games on purpose now because they don't want to win the President's Trophy and be jinxed? Nobody loses on purpose. Nobody. I can tell you that right now. Um, not letting them <laughs> wear me out. <laughs> Anyways, we'll be taping that show later on today, Panthers and Lightning. We are going back to the Combine next hour. And also back to Mooseman, Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship. What a day! We'll be back after this brief pause.
At the Key Auto Group pre-owned division, we're bringing back that new car feeling. No matter what, it's new to you and priced just right. No hidden fees, prices you can trust, an upfront buying experience. And it's all at keyautogroup.ca. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. The sports landscape continues to change and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new Halo mounting system. <laughs> if it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. Hee hee! Text 902 Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. One night in Edmonton, we were out on the town. And there was a guy by the name of Bane Nori. How about that? Bane says, I did I ever tell you guys about the night I was out with the uh, Rolling Stones? And I'm like, come on! What was Mick Jagger like? And he's like, well, no, no, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards weren't there. It was the rest of the band. And I hit the floor. You weren't with the Rolling Stones then, Bane. Keith Richards and Mick Jagger are the Rolling Stones. <laughs> exactly. Like, this is the Rod Peterson Show. Yes, it is, everybody, and we're coming in hot into our two episode number 1205 is coming to you from here in South Florida and a variety of other places. We're going live to the CFL Combine in the second segment of this hour, okay, with special guests from Winnipeg, as you, as you, and Jackson Sombach. It's just going to be great. Let's bring in the Moose. He is in Mooseman, Saskatchewan, at the Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship. His travel schedule is insane. And if I hadn't done this at times in my life, I wouldn't have believed what Darren's doing. But he flew in there from Toronto last night, drove there today, doing the show, bringing on the guests, and then he's heading on out tomorrow to California. So there's all that. This would have been a great day to just sit back and read viewer comments, Darren, and have what we normally do the view for sports fans yeah. because uh the nhl gms are meeting we'll probably do this tomorrow well this will it's not going anywhere this topic of rule changes in the nhl john ohm ohm in winnipeg says move the nhl to 10 minutes no need for a shootout glenn in medicine hat says this ship has probably sailed but what would hockey look like today if the red line was in place skill through the neutral zone instead of the stretch pass so they all have thoughts but we, we don't have time to get to those today. I'm getting to a point. 
Jan at the Four Seasons wrote in and said that the Oilers should have beaten Montreal in regulation last night. She's not happy about it that it went to overtime. And I'm like, it's not enough to win anymore. You got to win in style. And Nelson, our VP of Sim Events, writes in and says, what happened to they don't ask how, they ask how many. That's gone, brother. That's gone. Speaking of ships that have sailed. And to the CFL Combine discussion, this is where I want to bring you in, because you will point out, you and I are in different generations. You're a millennial. I'm Gen X. It's two separate generations. We look at things differently. And then there's a couple of generations after you. And this opt-out generation in sports, is an, it's an actual thing, okay? So stick with me. Jim Barker said it last week. He's like, I wouldn't blame a player for opting out if, if he thought it doesn't serve him best to opt out. Connor Bedard opted out of the trade deadline last year in the Western Hockey League. And by the way, it doesn't look too good to me that the Regina Pats are dead last in the East. Don't get me going. But Bedard didn't want to be traded. He opted out. And do you see how the older, white-haired football guys are capitulating with that? They're, they're going along with it. Okay, son, you don't want to opt into this drill. You don't have to. See how they're trying? No, I know. Trying to get into it. But it's very, very dangerous for the player. Because the oh, yeah. second you opt out, you've lost an opportunity to show to showcase your talent, your ability, more consistency. If you opt out of a combine altogether, you lose the chance to interview. So now you're leaving their evaluation of you to your game film, to um, he said, she said, to other references, and you're, you're taking the control out of your own hands. Now, it works for the 1%, though. Caleb Williams, he can't get any higher than first overall. So you don't need to go to the combine. Connor Bedard. Doesn't need to shoot pucks at the combine. He's going number one overall. All the comp, all that could happen is if you happen to miss, you could fall down. But anybody that's in the first round pick that thinks they're better than they actually are and opts out, you're leaving a lot up to chance. They all think they're better than they actually are. Talk to any coach, just so you know. How come Connor can do that, but I can't? Right? You know what I mean? So I am yes. sitting back just going, thank God I don't have to be part of this. Because all those kids, and for dang sure, all their parents think they are as good as Connor Bedard or the next Connor Bedard or the next Patrick Mahomes. And it's like, <laughs> you're not. Here's the film. Okay? They don't see it. So, and, that, and that's the interesting thing about I'm going to opt out. Okay, well, <laughs> we're going to opt out of drafting you. So there's that, too. And uh, Nelson, our VP of Sim Events, writes in. He says, even playing minor in high school football, I hated being hurt. I hated being sick because I wasn't on the field, meaning someone could take my spot. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a different mindset now. Serena and I were talking about the other day about, uh, you know, kids, they get everything they want. And then they get into adulthood. And I said, well, why can't I have that? Uh, because we said so. And then throw a fit. Right? That's what we're dealing with now. So there's, yeah. there's all of that. But as you, as you, the CFL basically gave us a pick of who we wanted coming up next segment from the Combine. And it will be Jackson Sonback because, again, I was in Lamar's classes with him and his parents. That, 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 it's just a personal thing. <laughs> Plus, he played for the Regina Rams. So I knew him when he was in his mommy's belly. It's kind of cool to have him on. And then as you, as you, I don't know. Do you know anything about as you, as you? I know Nelson does. Do you know his interest, interesting story? Not all of it. No, I don't. I'm really interested to hear it all. I know about him playing in, in the NCAA, covered him. You know, I spent some time and do some work with the, uh, the Crown Gridiron show that airs uh, on TSN with Jim Mullen. So I've covered him there. But the story I'm really looking forward to. Well, and I don't know the story either. That's why I'm going to ask him. But for those that don't, he was from Brooks, Alberta where when you drive through, you find out what the smell of money is. He's from Brooks, Alberta. His name's Aju Aju. Moved to Clearwater, Florida as a teen. Finished high school there. And then he went to the Clemson Tigers. Transferred to the University of South Florida. And then last year, finished up his collegiate career at Garden City Junior College, which I think is last chance you. 
from the from the Netflix. And now he's in the CFL that? Combine. Yeah, I think he is. So I called a guy today, I, one of my football lifelines here in Florida, and I said, tell me about Azu Azu. How come I didn't see him in the Boca Bowl? He goes, he didn't play in the Boca Bowl. He transferred last year. He's, out, he's not a bull anymore. He was at Garden City JC. I'm like, oh, thank God I called you. So that's why it's important to have lifelines in life and have a guy that you can trust when you call him, and that's what I figured out today. Darren in Utah, Utah Darren, writes in. He says, Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. are the only two that should opt out to the NFL Combine. Everyone else can only move up. Um, but they weren't the only two that opted out. And that's the thing I just want to say about Connor Bedard. I don't really have a... It would have been better for the Regina Pats, obvi, if they'd traded Connor Bedard. But they didn't. And now they're in last place. But he opted out. The reason being... Was I was told by the family was what he has got nowhere to go but down. He just set a world junior record for points, set all the Western League record for scoring for his age. We're good. Only a special kind of player can do that. Are you ready? Uh, are our next guests ready, Moose, while you're sitting there? They are right on the other side of the camera. So they are very close. Yes. Okay. Can you get them? I can absolutely get him. We'll make the change. Okay. I just wanted to show this first. All right. I know you won't get the chance to show Do it. Do it. Trophy. It's your this show. Thing. Let her rip. I can't, even, I can't even pick it up. This thing, as we decided, is heavier than the Stanley Cup. I don't know if there's a scale around here, but the Stanley Cup <laughs> is 34 and a half pounds. Rod, you looked it up. And uh, this is what they're playing for this week, the hydrant. So uh, pretty cool, pretty heavy. Be, uh, be very uh, quite an accomplishment to drink a beer out of that. Takes a whole team to lift it. So, yeah, all right. Good work, Darren. Unreal work, man. That kid drove out to Mooseman today to get set up to do the broadcast. And Tom Kelly and Mike Finlayson will be joining us right here in a moment from the 62nd Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship. And then we're, we're going to chat with them. Then we're going to take a break. And then we're going to go live to the CFL Combine in Winnipeg and be joined by Aju Aju. And then Jackson saw him back. And then Moose will come back and we'll make our NHL picks later. We don't normally have a day like this. But when we have these events and they want to bring the RP show out, this is what we do. We certainly do what we can to accommodate. And by the way, where is my... Bong! John Ohm says, cool trophy. Isn't it? Ryan McCarthy says something similar in upstate New York. That's a sweet trophy. That's where we're handing out. And actually, there were more questions from last hour that I didn't get to with Dale Nixon and Winston that I'll ask these two guys. I'm assuming you have to be a firefighter to participate in this curling championship. We're about to find out. Uh, and Nelson, Nelson, our VP of Sim Event, says, Garden City is, in fact, Last Chance U. And I got to thank my brother who got me onto Last Chance U on Netflix. Uh, I got addicted to it like everybody else. Last chance you. So that might tell you a little bit about as you, as you. He'll be with us next. But without further ado, let's head back to Musabin, the Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship, 62nd annual. Tom Kelly, he's in the hat. And Mike Finlayson is not in the hat. Joining us there, and I think they can hear us just fine. Guys, welcome from the Musabin Curling Club. Tom, I'm going to start with you. You both are past presidents, right, and life members of this association. Would you mind telling me, uh, Tom, what you love about this curling bond spiel and how it got to be as big as it is? I think it's the camaraderie. Uh, you know, it's firefighters getting together uh, for a national competition. Uh, and each provincial has their play downs. So you get to meet people uh, doing the, the, do the same thing as you do from all over the province. And same as I five got on the ferry and uh, decided to go to Revelstoke, I go to a fire hall because I know somebody there. So you get, uh, you know, whenever you're in trouble, go to a fire hall and they'll help wow. you out. I like this. Now, you're from Victoria and as is Mike, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll bring uh, Mike in now. No, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Tom. What were you going to say? 
no, no. I was given Mike. Yeah. Okay. Mike, what's your history with this event, man? And give me some of the stories. Well, I can't give you all the stories, Rod, but uh, <laughs> I guess I first started in 1984. And uh, up till this point, both Tom and I have attended over 30 of these national championships. So we started out, I did as a driver, and just, it's kind of addictive once you come to one, you want to come to them all. Some as a player, and then, of course, as, as executive. But okay, again, well, so people dumb. you meet and the fun you have. Of course, dumb question from me, but I'm famous for that. I don't mind. I, I was remiss in not asking these guys this last hour. You have to be a firefighter, active to participate. Can you tell me who's participating in this event this, this week? Well, yes, you have to be a either paid or volunteer firefighter to participate in your provincials and the national championship. And that's basically the qualifications. And again, male, female, it doesn't matter. Again, it's just to come and okay. have fun. Now, over to you, Tom. I was particularly fascinated when I saw the schedule for this thing, and I saw entertainment every night provided by the individual provinces, two, three per night, but the competitors are responsible for that. Give me an ex I can't even dream up what it, what it might be like. What, what are these guys doing for entertainment for everybody else? Well, they have, they have skit nights, a uh, couple of nights where they, each team uh, puts on a skit, uh, and then we have a trophy for the best skip, uh, skit uh, for the couple days. So that, you know, two nights, because we, um, each province brings food that's, you know, like BC brought salmon. And uh, we, so we have, that's, that's our dinner. And uh, we, the host has someone that does the cooking and that for us. And uh, so it, after they have, we're not gonna dance every night, you know, when you're curling this much. So the skit nights fill in a couple nights and they're very entertaining. They're very, it's lots of fun. It sounds like I could just think of it when I, when I saw what was happening there. And Mike, uh, if you don't mind, before I let you go, just last hour I learned this is the second biggest event beyond, outside of the Briar. Um, you're obviously a curling fan and you're a competitor. How good is the curling, in your opinion? Here is, we've had past world champions here. Eddie Wernick, we can go back to Eddie, Neil Harrison, Jerry Richard, John Morris. So those are quite skilled curlers. So the competition level here over the years has been quite worth watching. Okay, we're talking some national champions, uh, champions there and world champions. Is there anything else, Mike, I'll let you yeah. speak for the two of you before I let you go about the host town, the host committee, or just the event itself? Uh, this year, we kind of, the small towns are the best. The whole town comes out, and the support here has been fantastic. That you kind of wondered coming into little small towns, but again, they're the best ones, and the people here have just been fantastic. I'd come back here every year. But unfortunately, we, we move food. around the country, go to province to province. Uh, good stuff, man. Well, I see why you continue to do it every year. Great job, man. I appreciate it. Have fun in Musuman and travel safe when it's all said and done. Thanks, Rod. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. You bet. Tom, Tom, great job, guys. Tom Kelly and Mike Finlayson, both past presidents from the Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship. When we return, oh, by the way, Randy from Winnipeg with a good one. He says, don't let any dogs near that trophy. They're playing for the Golden Fire Hydrant. When we come back, we are going live to the CFL Combine in Winnipeg. What a day on the RP Show. We'll return in a moment on Game Plus Television, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live.
The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Text 902-518-3033. 902-518-3033. Pick up your phone and text RP, that's Rod Peterson. Text 902-518-3033. We're all capable of doing more. More speed, more reps, more commitment to getting every detail perfect. And that's why it's important we never miss a donation appointment. Blood and plasma donors are needed every day in Canada to support thousands of patients that rely on Canada's lifeline. We're asking you to join the Hockey Gives Blood Partners for Life team. Join today by downloading the Give Blood app or book online at blood.ca slash HGB. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, reward your love for movies by signing up for Landmark Extras for free today. Get more of what you love, free movies and concession items, invitations to exclusive screenings, and more. Go to LandmarkCinemas.com for details. Uh, Producer Clark, who is the guest? Would you mind telling me who is the guest? Yeah, so, yeah, my guy Nelson from uh, our VP of Sim Events writes me, he goes... Today's show is exactly how you dreamt up the whole concept. Amazing. How did we draw it up 1,205 shows ago? It was just supposed to be Rod and his friends and Moose talking sports, and that's what we're doing. But now on national television and 99.1 Key FM, and, of course, the streams. Jumping here, there, everywhere. And now we're going to Winnipeg in the CFL Combine where Jackson Sombeck of the University of Regina Rams joins us. And Jackson, uh, boy, you look like your dad. Poor thing. Welcome to the <laughs> RP show. <laughs> are you Thanks ready? For you, are you? Hey, good to see you, man. Are you ready for what's about to go down at the Combine? Tell me what your experience has been like so far. Oh, yeah, I'm pumped. It's like you get here, you kind of feel like a king. You kind of get picked up at the airport. You stay in a beautiful hotel. and get a big uh, gift package of clothes and stuff like that. So it's a pretty exciting experience, and I'm pumped for the weekend. It's the dream. Now, tell our audience and viewers and listeners, you, so you went to Waterloo, right, to the regional. Uh, was that invite only? And you did so well, you earned a invite to this national one. So talk about how that process works, if you don't mind. Yeah, so pretty much like the national combine is like, I'm not sure what it is, like the top 60 prospects or something like that for the CFL draft, Canadian prospects. And then the invitational is kind of like the 60 to 120, 130 
um, and you go there and do like a just a one day combine, just do all the testing results and then one on ones. And then um, they picked eight of us from the 74, I think, to come to the national combine and um, get another chance to kind of compete and showcase our skills. I just, I think it sounds amazing as it is, but yet you haven't started the competitions yet. Am I right on that? What's your schedule for the week? Uh, correct. Yeah, we start tomorrow. We start testing, like all the combine testing, so we do your bench, 40, um, all that type of stuff. And then uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is like football practice. Like you have Skelly, Indy, one-on-ones, all that type of stuff that you normally have in a football practice on my university football team. What did you do in Waterloo specifically to earn this invite to the National Combine? Um, I, uh, I worked my butt off and it paid off. I uh, uh, ran some good numbers. I ran a good 40, good bird, um, did, did good cone drills, and uh, times paid off and got an invite here. And then I had a pretty good one-on-one -on -one session as well. So I just went confident into that and knew I was going to put up good numbers and just made sure to execute. And I'm um, super grateful and thrilled to be here. So. Well, I was going to ask you if you had a specialty in the events, but it sounds like you kind of did it all. Speed, strength, all the rest, right? Are they all kind of your specialty? Uh, I'm pretty, like, decent at all of them. I'd say my best one is probably, um, like, the shuttle and the algebra, like the quickness drills. I didn't do too well on my shuttle in Waterloo, so I'm hoping to improve on that this week. But I'd say I'm pretty well-rounded in most of the combine drills. I'm going to tell you something, Jackson. And I know we got a lot of Rams people watching right now, Western Canadian football people. I've known you since you were in your mom's tummy. And I called Rams games when your dad was a stud running back for the Rams. And you've ended up as a defensive back. Can you talk about your football road to get to this combine? Because it's been a lot of hard work. I, my heart's warm, honestly, just talking about it. This is a hell of a story man and how did you gravitate to that position and excel at it and get an invite to the combine for sure uh first off my dad reminded me to remind you when i beat you in rock paper scissors when i was elementary school oh, in that one that? competition <laughs> i forget and, the uh, losses I see. but continue um so pretty much i played running back my whole life like my dad coached me played with all my brothers i have three brothers that still play on the rams and i still play like we're super close and play football today together um, so I was a running back up until grade nine and then tried out for team SAS Q16 and they're like, this kid's pretty small. Let's try him out at DB. He's pretty athletic. And then I pretty much just took off or like DB. I kind of excelled at it for my age and size and stuff like that. So then continued to play that throughout high school, um, university, and then, um, like trained since I was like 14 with Vincent Donaldson, went to a bunch of camps. My parents pretty much put me in everything they could to make me a better football player. So I thank them for that. And uh, yeah, here I am today. Yeah, yeah, and the work's just beginning now, Jackson. Lucky you. What's been the coolest experience so far in Winnipeg? Um, I would say today, like, we had our measurements and stuff like that, and it's just, like, the details of it. So we come in, like, they're either medicals, and they're just testing how flexible we are, what our grip strength is, like, just, like, very fine point details, and they're just going to know every bit about us which i think is pretty cool and then even just like our schedules today so like my itinerary for today i have like four interviews and they have it laid out like 12 20 3 30 whatever it may be it's just like pretty cool it makes you feel uh, like a pro almost <laughs> well you are man you're this close to being a pro and you've had tremendous guidance i can't tell you anything that your mom and dad haven't told you other than to say just enjoy it and be you jackson we're following real closely i appreciate you uh, coming on here today Appreciate for having me, Rod. Thank you. Jackson Sumback from the CFL Combine. And you guys let me know when As You, As You is lined up and ready to go. But, okay. Oh, it's the next segment? Okay. I, um, I, for I totally forgot about that. We used to do a thing at, what school was it? Text me, Steve. It was uh, St. Josephat? St. Josephine? And they used to do St. Dominic. Sorry, St. Dominic. It just popped into my head. Uh, we used to do rock, paper, scissors competitions. They brought me in to be a referee of it. And uh, I guess Jackson at the age of 12 beat me. Let it go, Jackson. So we'll be following the CFL Combine. And like you said, makes you feel like a pro. These are the things that are so exciting. And 
CFL was so nice to send me that football. Obviously, we're big CFL backers, and uh, it just feels great to be live from the Combine. And as you, as you will be joining us next, 902-518-3033 is the number to reach us here on the Sober Carpenter text line. I, I, we haven't even been on the air 90 minutes, but darn close. And it's just been a whew. If you're keeping track, four guests from the Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship one from the combine, moose from out there in Mooseman, and another to go. As you, as you. Oh, Jeff the Stampeders uh, fan, Jeff the Stamps fan comes in with a punch between the. You know what? Bad question by me, or lack of questioning by me, Jeff. He says, How much does Jackson want to be a Stampeder? I shouldn't assume he doesn't want to be a Stampeder. Growing up in Regina, uh, maybe he does, but I doubt it. Uh, Nelson, the VP of Sim Events, says, forget the numbers that one on, those one-on-one -on -one sessions can make or break a combine for a lot of players. Well, again, you get a lot more interested once you know somebody, and hopefully our viewers, after seeing these interviews, feel like you know them, and you find it a little more interesting than you otherwise normally would. I'm just going to take a dip out for a second and tell you what our, just update the poll today as we bring it back to hockey, because it is March 20th after all. And the daily poll is brought to you by Key Yorkton Kia. Unleash the future, the Kia EV6 GT at Key Yorkton Kia, where performance and innovation go hand in hand. Go to keyyorktonkia.com or call 306-783-2772. For more information, the 23 Kia EV6 GT, movement that inspires. Do you have a YouTube update, Clark? Because I have not checked the Twitter. I, I guess I could do that right now. Okay. Uh, you all are saying, what's the question, Rod? The question is, should fighting be banned in hockey? And there's a reason why we would bring that up today. And I'll get to that in a second. But on Twitter, 81% saying, no, it shouldn't be banned in hockey, and Clark's telling me in my ear that 83% of YouTube viewers are saying, no, it shouldn't be banned. Um, reason why, I go back to point two of our quick six show topics today. Chris Simon, once one of hockey's most feared fighters, has died at the age of 52. The NHL Players Association confirmed the news via Simon's family that he died on Monday night. The cause of death wasn't provided, but his family released a statement today saying they believe it's CTE. I've got thoughts on that, but just hang on. The six foot three, 232 pound forward from Wawa, Ontario, compiled 1,824 penalty minutes in 782 games with Quebec, Colorado, Washington, Chicago, New York, Calgary, and Minnesota. And that's what led to the poll. Should fighting in hockey be banned? I had a debate today, and I'll be honest, I got to applaud the maturity of the other guy on the part of this debate because he said, you know, with the Simon news coming out from his family, blaming CTE. My own personal opinion here as a guy that works in this as a mental health professional, you can't say that it's CTE unless you know that it's CTE. I read the article today first at yahoo.com. The family is blaming CTE. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. You can't tell whether you've had it or not until post-mortem. He just died Monday night. There's no chance they've had a chance to examine that brain. You can't say he's got it if you don't know he's got it. Now, if it comes back and says that he does, then will I eat my words? I don't know. It's a different conversation then. The fighting in hockey, Ben, oh, man, I kind of wish Darren was here, but he'll, maybe we'll have him in later. I'm not sure. But it's just a fascinating debate. The NHL general managers are meeting down here, I believe, in South Florida right now. I saw the video of it. They didn't say where they were. The insiders and then the GMs. They're talking about a lot of things, but fighting in hockey isn't one of them. It's not going anywhere. And the gentleman I was debating on Twitter today about this said it's not part of the game. Actually, yeah, it is. And it has been for over 100 years. It's as much a part of the game as tripping and hooking and shooting the puck out of play and delay a game. All those things are penalized. So hockey is part of the game. If you say that it's not, 
You just don't know what you're talking about. And that doesn't preclude people from yapping off on Twitter. But in my mind, this guy doesn't. And he was campaigning, uh, you know, comparing it to other sports, MMA, boxing. All of these sports are voluntary. If you don't want to fight, don't fight. Don't play. It's sad that this is the way some guys' careers end, but it's a choice that they made. Period. Um, the interesting thing, too, by the way, where I said I, w- I was wishing Darren was here, and I have this written down for later on this afternoon when Serena and I record our Cats and Bolts podcast on the uh, Panthers and Lightning that we do. The NHL GMs are debating some rule changes. They're talking about everything. And that's a little bit of the problem because I went, you, you, you can't find too much coverage of it here that the NHL GMs are meeting in the, their backyard. Nobody covers it here. So I go to tsn.ca and they're saying the GMs are talking about the long-term injured injury reserve list and what the Vegas Golden Knights have done this year and Tampa did before them to find loopholes around it. Oh, oh, we're going to talk about it. That's what they said two years ago. Or whenever was the last time Tampa Bay used this loophole and went on to win a Stanley Cup with Kucherov. Now the Golden Knights are doing it with Thomas Hurdle. We're going to talk about it. Well, you know what? As long as you continue to talk about it, that's great. Kelly McCrimmon is still going to go find a loophole to win a Stanley Cup. Keep talking. John Lynch always said it. The Atana Club. All talk and no action. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. We're talking about talking. The CFL and the XFL. How'd that work out? Some people are talkers. Some people are doers. We're going back to the CFL Combine. Speaking of, when we return, I can't wait for this interview with As You, As You. We are live on the Game Plus Television Network, WQEE Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live. Did you know that you can help save a life? And you can start right now. Stem cells from male donors increase chances of positive outcomes for patients, yet they only make up 40% of our registry. Today, there are hundreds of people in Canada searching for their life-saving match. You can be a patient's best hope. Be a hero by registering with Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Registry now. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. I'm Bridget Laquette. I'm a First Nation Olympic silver medalist, and I'm proud to represent Indigenous hockey players across Canada. Each year, hundreds of Canadians need a stem cell transplant from an unrelated donor to save their life. Anyone can have a hard time finding a stem cell match, but for Indigenous peoples, it can be even more difficult because just over 1% of prospective donors on Canada's stem cell registry are of Indigenous backgrounds. Be a hero. Join me in Hockey Gives Blood in helping to make a life-saving difference to those in need. Register today at blood.ca slash be a hero. The sports landscape continues to change and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Hi, my name is Logan Stackle. And I'm Connor Bedard. We're both Hockey Gives Blood player ambassadors and proud to be blood donors. 
There are thousands of patients each year in Canada that rely on a generous stranger to save their life. Please book an appointment today to donate blood at blood.ca slash HGB. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. Oh, yeah, he's back. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. RP Show continues. We don't have as you yet, Clark. Is that what I'm uh, together? Okay. Um, very much enjoyed the interview with Jackson Sombach from the CFL Combine. And uh, we're just trying to give you a reason to watch the Combine and follow it this weekend. It will be streaming, by the way, CFL.ca. As you, as you, coming up, former Clemson Tiger, South Florida Bowl, Garden City Junior College. And you just got a hell of a story. The football people all know who he is, and you're going to know about him real shortly, too. From Brooks, Alberta, 6'4", 227. Wide receiver. Sounds like the perfect player. I can't wait to chat with him from the CFL Combine in Winnipeg. While we wait, a sports update on this Wednesday. Shohei Otani's RBI single capped a four-run eighth-inning rally in his Dodgers debut, and Los Angeles beat the Padres 5-2 in Major League Baseball season opener in Seoul, Korea today. South Korea, Otani went two for five in his first game since signing a record $700 million deal with the Dodgers. Pause that for a second, because we are going to Winnipeg now in the CFL Combine, and I appreciate as you, as you joining us. I, I, listen, dude, I have been waiting for this interview for a long time, man, just to get your football story and, and, and all the rest. But can you tell me, as you, how's your week been in Winnipeg? I know you're just getting started, but what's going on out there? It's, uh, I just want to correct you. My name is a Joe. It's pronounced a Joe. A Joe? Okay. A Joe. Yes, sir. But, you know, other than that, it's been great, man. You know, flew in here yesterday about 7 p.m. Uh, got all my stuff situated. Got my hotel room, you know. I'm staying with an old boy from uh, Delaware State. He's uh, originally from Hamilton, but my boy Mike. So it's been great, man. The food's amazing. Uh, everyone here is so nice. You know, the hospitality is great. The hotel, oh my goodness, bro. The sweet life is acting Cody vibe. Like, I love it. Other than that, yeah. How about that? That's, yeah. That's Fort Gary. The Fort Gary I'm, is what I read where you're at. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that's, that's a great spot. I think there's a keg right across the street and a Starbucks, too. Okay, uh, Joe, here's the, here's, the, here's the big one. How does a guy go from Brooks, Alberta, to big-time U.S. college football schools and then up to the CFL Combine. And I know you went to Clearwater Academy. I know all that, but a lot of our viewers don't. Would you mind just talking about your football story? Okay, well, yeah. I started in Brooks, Alberta, as you just said. Um, played a lot of sports growing up. Um, ultimately, around eighth grade, ninth grade, I was like, whoa, I'm getting, like, super, super good. I'm like, you know, I want to pursue this, like, like for real, for real. Man, I want to make it out, you know? And ultimately, ninth grade, I decided, I was like, I got to go to a bigger city. I got to, you know, no one knows me in little, little Brooks, 14,000 people. Like, come on. So I decided to take my talents up to Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, that's where I went and played uh, football and basketball. Did a little bit of track and field and all that at uh, Harry Ainley High School. Um, after that, I did two years over there. And uh, I was like, you know, just getting a whole bunch of interests and whatnot. Not, no one's really pulling the trigger on me. So I was like, yeah, let me, uh, let me go down south and show them boys I can ball, right? So decided to take my talents down to Florida, Clearwater Academy International. And that's where I played football over there. And that's where I kind of blew up and whatnot, you know, and uh, ultimately decided to take my talents to Clemson University. And, uh, yeah, I'm forever grateful because I learned a lot. Um, you know, did my thing. Uh, Decided that I should uh, move elsewhere, so I, then I went to University of South Florida, as you mentioned earlier, and uh, yeah, 
you know it's just been a, it's been a journey it's been a journey i also i even played at a uh, garden city it's a little uh, juco in down in kansas but yeah three schools you know four years so hey i'm just trying to get it man just trying to make it out okay well i'm familiar with garden city i watch netflix too you know but the interesting yeah. thing was i was talking to one of the Bulls people, and I said, how come I didn't see him in the in the Boca Bowl last year? They said, no, no, I wasn't with the Bulls last year. He went to Garden City. So yeah. um, can you talk about that decision? What? So you're done at Garden City, I would assume. What led you to go from South Florida to Garden City and now exploring your next options? Uh, <clears throat> ultimately, uh, you know, I have some uh, family issues going on right now, so I'm just trying to take care of them. And uh, me deciding to go onto this path uh, allows me to take care of those issues. So, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm a big family-oriented guy, and, uh, you know, just, that's what I do it for, you know. So just trying to help my mom all in all. Yeah. Good for you, man. Well, so I have this right. Ad Joe, Ad Joe? Yes, sir. The product? Yes, sir. Joe, Joe. Correct press. Okay. So I just asked Jackson Sombach. He's a DB from the U of R, what his specialties are at the Combine. Uh, and he says he's kind of an all-around guy. How about you? What should we expect from you at the Combine this week? You know, uh, at the Combine, you should expect uh, JoJo to go full speed, you know, 100% every play, every rep, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm a big physical guy, you know, I never, I'm never ducking no contact and nothing like that. So, you know, I'm gonna, definitely gonna show their aggression. You know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the aggressor. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little bigger than uh, most uh, receivers, you know, but I also got that jumping ability. And, you know, some people mistaken me for being big, that I'm big and slow. Nah, these feet work, you know, so I really, I can get there too, you know what I'm saying? So uh, all in all, I'm just, uh, I'm just excited to show, show y'all what I'm about. Well, I got to get this straightened out because si I've seen 6'4", 6'3", 225, 227. What officially have you measured in at this week in Winnipeg? Uh, to be honest with you, I measure in at 2 o'clock, so <laughs> I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go pop a cheeseburger for lunch. And I was <laughs> remiss in not asking Jackson where he would like to go in the CFL draft. I, I, I shouldn't assume because he's from Saskatchewan, he'd like to play for the Rough Riders. Do you have a desired CFL team you'd like to play for as a pro? Uh, I, I don't have a desired team, uh, you know. My, I was born in Calgary, so I want to be a hometown hero, I guess. But, like, all in all, bro, I'm just, I, I'll show gratitude to whatever team that chooses me, you know? So. Good. Well, I think any team that chooses you would be happy to have you. And I, and I have to say, say I, I, let's say you're between 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 227. That is, like, the dream wideout, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, have you... Have you obviously? I'm guessing you played every position, and and wide out is kind of where you settled at, or how did you end yeah. up out there? Yeah, um, uh, I started off as a running back back in Pee Wee, then I moved to linebacker, then I went to slot back, and then quarterback, and then ultimately I was like, yeah, I'll just play uh, wide out and free safety, and I did that for a few years, and then the transition when I went to Florida, I was like strictly. Strictly wide up. Yeah. What did you think of the players down here once you got here? Uh, when I got to this back up, back up to Canada, Clearwater or clear what? No, Clearwater. no, I'm in I'm in South Florida. So what did you think oh. once you got to Clearwater and then? Yeah. Oh, no, nah, it was you know football is football at the end of the day. You know they were a little more grittier, but hey, once they brought it, I was like, oh yeah, I got that too. Don't worry about that. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Joe, I think you've earned, gained some fans here today that'll be watching the Combine just a little more closely. So yeah. good luck, man, and uh, stay safe. Sure. Be, stay healthy. Thank you. I appreciate you guys for having me on the show. All right. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe, from Brooks, Alberta, and maybe will be the next football star out of Brooks. Let's get to all your comments, and we'll finish that sports update when we come back. Live on the Game Plus TV network, Key Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube Live.
The sports landscape continues to change, and teams and facilities are under more pressure to provide online and in-venue entertainment. They need the right team to deliver their product. Look no further than IKS Live. We provide service across North America and produce the best fan experience across all platforms. Foreigner, live in Moose Jaw. Foreigner is back. The Farewell Canada Tour. You're as cold as ice. May 13th, the Moose Jaw Event Center. Foreigner, with special guest, Headpins. Tickets on sale now at sasktix.ca and the Moose Jaw Event Center box office. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Hi, my name is Logan Stankhoven. And I'm Connor Bedard. We're both Hockey Gives Blood player ambassadors and proud to be blood donors. There are thousands of patients each year in Canada that rely on a generous stranger to save their life. Please book an appointment today to donate blood at blood.ca slash HGB. IKS Game Day wishes to congratulate the city of Esteban and Affinity Place on their brand new center ice display. This state-of-the-art score clock features five LED faces with full motion graphics, scoring integration, and our new halo mounting system. <laughs> if it's time for an upgrade, let us show you how to deliver the best fan experience. You can find us at IKSGameDay.com. At the Key Auto Group pre-owned division, we're bringing back that new car feeling. No matter what, it's new to you and priced just right. No hidden fees, prices you can trust, an upfront buying experience. And it's all at keyautogroup.ca. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. What a great day. Thank you for being a part of it, everybody. And a huge bravo to this wonderful RP Show team and the IKS crew for bringing together one of the busiest shows we've ever had. Forget about the fact... It's episode number 1,205, but thanks to our guests live from the Canadian Firefighters Curling Championship in Moose and thanks to them for bringing us out. I got to tell you this about Darren. I, again, if I hadn't done these types of things back in the day, as John Shannon said, our heyday, because apparently we're old, Darren flew from Toronto last night on a flight that was rescheduled, scared the hell out of him. Got into Regina, drove to Musaman this morning, which is 90 minutes. Got all set up to do the show from there and bring on these guests, Dale Nixon, Winston, Tom Kelly, Mike Finlayson. He's going to hopefully sleep a bit this afternoon. And then he's emceeing their event tonight in the Musaman Curling Club and then driving back to the Queen City and flying to California tomorrow on a 5.30 a.m. flight. Whew, I'm tired just thinking about it. And then moving these guys in from the Canadian Football League. And we're going to blow this up, the CFL Combine, because the CFL has been so good to us. 
How about a Joe, a Joe, referring to himself in the third person? Did you notice, Clark? I think Bingo. a Joe, a Joe is going to do just great. <laughs> okay, man. 6'4", 227, three colleges. Should be interesting. And I'm going to come back to your viewer comments here in a second. But just to think about Musaman, a lot of you heard the story, but a lot of you haven't. One of the last times I was there, I was speaking at an event with Deron Carter, who incidentally is about 23 miles up the road from me right now. Palm Beach County. And uh, we had a long talk, Deron and I, about a lot of things, most of which will remain private. But I asked him what his off-season workout schedule was, and he said, oh, I don't have one, Rod. No, 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 no. He goes, I think the body has a finite amount of heartbeats in it, and I'm not going to waste them in my 20s. Okay. And by the way, I love him. But it's unfortunate uh, that his pro football career, I, I, I hope it hasn't ended. I mean, he's coaching now. I hope he ends up coaching. A lot of us that have made a lot of big flubs in our life end up coaching. How about that? And the second act is better than the first. That's what I hope it is for Duran. And we had that talk in Mooseman. And then he went out, by the way. We got asked by the coach of the Mooseman Generals football team, high school team, Dexter Mondor, to come out and uh, address his team, watch them practice. Duran walked right onto the field and individually coached every single kid at all 24 positions on the field. I'm like... How about that? He goes, oh, I've been doing it for years at my dad's football camp that? in South Florida. He knows every position on the field intimately. He's like, Rod, I'm a better quarterback. They just won't let me play. <laughs> These guys are something. So I'm just, I'm just interested to see what the career of a Joe, a Joe is. I'm glad that he corrected me right out of the gate. A lot of pros back in the day wouldn't correct you till like year three or four of their career. By then, it's like too late. Um, on the fighting vein, Wilf in Steinbach, Manitoba, writes in, that's our poll question, should fighting be banned? 82, 83-ish percent of you saying, no, it should not. Wilf says, hi, Rod and Moose. Staged fights should be banned. Fights during the play with cause are okay. Caused by dirty hits, etc. I think you're in a slippery slope when, and, Wilf, you obviously know hockey, but I think that we're in a slippery slope if we're going to designate what type of fight that it is. It's okay after a dirty hit, but what if it's after a clean hit? Because if somebody gets laid out nine times out of ten, on a clean hit, nine times out of ten, the guy that laid that hit's going to have to answer for it with a fight, and that's stupid. That's dumb. I'd rather have a staged fight where both guys know the fight's coming. I remember... Uh, Pats and Warriors, back of the day, Clark, you'd have just, ah, who knows? Maybe you do remember this. Remember Brent Doherty, Bingo. Clark? And some meat, meathead the Warriors had? Hell I'm trying to remember yes. where the game was. I think it was in Moose Jaw. Brent Doherty for us, the Pats, and some meathead for them. You old Dub fans, remind me who it was. They fought right off the draw. Our coach, Bobby Lowe's, and their coach, Curtis Hunt, both got suspended for five games for a stage, <laughs> stage fight, and they didn't even know it was going to happen. The players engaged in it. The players set it up. Doherty and whoever their meathead was. Lowe's and Hunsey didn't even know, and they get suspended. Oh, my God, were they mad. <laughs> the coaches. How do you suspend them when they don't even know that this fight was coming? Maybe Lane Manson, one of those, one of those idiots, I don't know. Dave, number three, early 2000, whenever Britt Doherty played, I can't remember. Derek England sounds right. Somebody write in and tell me. Dave, number three in Winnipeg, writes in, and he says, there's going to be a moose loose in California. Yes, watch for him on the golf courses. That's where moose will be. It's funny because I got a real good friend here named Chris from the Bronx, lives here in South Florida, and he wants to take me golfing, wants to take me fishing. I'm like, I don't really like doing either. I'll go fishing. I won't go golfing. Uh, 
Dan in Saskatoon says, I asked a former L.A. Ram about Aaron Donald's off-season workout. How much did he squat? A house was the answer. They couldn't put any more plates on the bar. At least he was working out. That's the point. Duran wasn't working out at all. Nelson says, we were calling Dave N. Bush, Devin Bush for years in the CFL before he corrected anyone. Right, I was the guy. What about Ladafius McCullough? Get fast, uh, flashbacks as a broadcaster bringing up some of these names. Jeff the Stams fan says, so you are close to Mar-a-Lago. You should try to get Trump on to talk CFL. Trust me, well, maybe he does have thoughts on the CFL, I shouldn't say. Ryan in New York says, Garden City Community College, home of the Bronx Busters. And what was their coach's name? Jason, Jason something. I don't think he's coaching anymore. He didn't, he didn't acquit himself very well on that show, in my opinion. B. Henderson in Winnipeg writes in, he says, fighting in hockey keeps all the meatballs in line. Without it, guys would take runs at the McDavid's and the Bedard's. Exactly, B. Henderson. Would you mind telling the Karens that? Because they're not listening to me or anybody that makes sense or understands how the game goes. There's a reason they were called policemen way, way, way back in the day. And let me guess. These guys that are against fighting want to defund the police. Or the military? Probably. It's the same idea. It's the same people, I'm telling you. Uh, tomorrow we got Tim Hunter and who was the other? Who was the other clerk? Jesse Pierce from Minnesota, NHL.com and the Bar Down Beauties podcast. We got through it. Great work, everybody. Give yourselves a hand. We'll see you tomorrow, noon Eastern, uh, here on the Mighty Game Plus Television. Hey guys, say hey to Chad Midgley for me this afternoon, would you? And Key Radio. Yeah, Jason Brown. Thanks, Ryan in New York. Have a good one, everybody. See you. Who has more fun than us? <laughs>